Well, I started in uh, uh, working on a record shop uh, in uh, 1989, and uh, before I was always uh, interested in uh, music, buying records, following labels, and scenes. And uh, yeah, then it was like 15 years of working in record shops and always uh, feeling like I could start a label, have something different. I, I saw there was a spot for a, a label like Linfeed that could cover different scenes and have a nice graphics appealing. And yeah, and uh, in 2001, there was that was the time uh, the opportunity came. Uh, yeah, we started in a wrong time actually. Because the record business was uh, going down and the crisis was starting and people stopped uh, buying uh, uh, CDs and music so much. Uh, but, uh, you know, we have a, I have a, a saying that it's uh, wrong but strong. It means we started in a wrong time and I'm actually, I don't uh, know, I'm not a musician. I don't know much about music or even about the technical part of music as uh, microphones and soundboards and uh, so it's uh, kind of I'm in a wrong business at the wrong time but um, yeah I'm uh, happy and it for me it makes uh, sense and I think the most important thing is that I have the same years as everybody else I mean I don't judge the I'm not going through music through the virtuosic way of playing music or the technical part of uh, of uh, recording or uh, I just have uh, fresh ears and uh, and I listen to music just uh, everybody else maybe I listen to music more and for longer but uh, yeah I, I kind of uh, talk the same language or I hear in the same language as uh, all other people Yeah, but it was more lo n not uh, only about uh, the scene, the local scene, but about the uh, international scene. I never wanted to have a Portuguese label or uh, just releasing Portuguese musicians and sell uh, uh, records in Portugal. I always wanted to, that was the goal, like uh, using uh, global uh, communication to go abroad and also to kind of export the Portuguese musicians that were uh, getting better and better. Because when I started to work in record shops and, and listening to jazz in the 80s, the scene was just like uh, musicians playing standards, uh, uh, professional musicians were starting by then. We don't have a rich uh, past in uh, Portugal about uh, playing jazz or improvised music. So things was, were kind of starting with uh, jazz schools at the hot club, and, uh, but it was a bit uh, like uh, yeah, old fashioned and not really creative scene. And this has been developing over the years. Zinger was by then maybe the only improviser we had, and now we have uh, many more, and, um, and even uh, more mainstream jazz is uh, uh, more interesting these days. People are more looking for uh, identity and uh, to uh, play with each other and uh, uh, growing, uh, make a scene grow. So now y you can find musicians from different uh, scenes playing together and uh, yeah, I think it's much more interesting these days. When the Clean Feed started, I was still working in record shops and I could see that uh, people were like, oh, if they release this record, it's uh, because nobody wanted, no other label wanted and uh, they're small and Portuguese and this is a stigma that comes from uh, dictatorship and takes uh, uh, generations to to pass and this is a time where we have enough generations and um, and you can see that in uh, football for instance it was not not possible for portuguese to win uh, Euro european cup uh, with the stigma players had uh, 10 years ago that was still going on like we go uh, playing to international teams and uh, portuguese always felt like uh, smaller and and uh, about portuguese uh, products as well we were not giving the good credit to our tomatoes and strawberries and olive oil and wine and, and cheese and the good things we had. And now we are looking for the labels in the clothes and see if they are made in Portugal. And we want the Portuguese tomatoes because they're better and the closer, local. Well, uh, Spuma, we started Spuma to have uh, music that doesn't fit uh, clean feet, basically. 
uh, there's a great scene. I think it's the more than the jazz scene in Portugal. The most uh, interesting uh, scene is these uh, musicians that can't, can't be labeled. We had a record shop, uh, a jazz record shop in Lisbon for 10 years. And um, we thought we had a rehearsing space. We thought, oh, musicians would come and meet and play and um, develop their languages, playing together, experimenting uh, new ways of uh, playing music. And uh, uh, But in the end, it was more like these kind of musicians, like Flip Flizard, Tiago Souza, and uh, some other rock musicians, and uh, Gabriel Ferrandini and uh, Pedro Souza. So for 10 years we had this uh, space where we had the drum kit there and the bass amp and the, the double bass where musicians could come and play for free as much as they want. So this kind of uh, came to the point where this label started because there was all these musicians playing uh, open music that is not rock, it's not jazz, it's not uh, uh, live, it's not uh, free improvisation, it's uh, something else. I mean, you could have uh, Joana Sa improvising, but she's not improvising in a way that uh, jazz musicians or improv musicians are improvising. She or Flip Flizardo, they improvise in a totally different way. So it's um, it's hard to put them in the same uh, box or same label as uh, Gabriel Ferrandini or Pedro Sousa or Rodrigo Amado or Rodrigo Pinheiro. It's another kind of. Uh, uh, of improvising it. And this uh, started uh, Spuma. So Travassus was the one more, uh, he was the one that opened the doors for these kind of musicians. And so Travassus curates the, this, uh, uh, this uh, label and also a very important festival called Rescaldo at Cultrgest. Uh, and Rescaldo is also part of this uh, non uh, idiomatic but out of uh, jazz and improv uh, scene. It feels uh, really good because uh, we're kind of uh, supporting a, a scene that uh, really needs to come out. There's a big urge about uh, these musicians, especially to go abroad, and this is the step uh, it's missing. Uh, we need to find a situation where musicians can travel and, uh, uh, and play abroad because I think they're very unique and uh, they fit in a lot of festivals. Uh, we just need them to get more popular and uh, also to find the uh, travel support for them. There was no, there's not so much in between free improvisation and uh, written uh, more jazz uh, uh, music. I think that's the kind of the the gap. It still exists. But people like Suzanne uh, and uh, Gonzalo Almeida, uh, Luis Lopes and a few others are uh, like changing this a little bit. And I think it's uh, interesting. Because, you know, if uh, improvised music is playing in a certain language or without language, sometimes it goes to, uh, to places where you've been before. It's either you're a really great improviser, like uh, Evan Parker or uh, uh, Carlos Singer, uh, and then it's you always have this kind of concept inside the music, even if you play without the language, uh, or it easily become like another session, another free jazz or another non-idiomatic uh, session. And that is, uh, for me, it's a little boring. I like to to release uh, music that has uh, some kind of a concept where people play together and develop a language. I like this idea about music and I think it's about life itself. It's nice to develop uh, uh, a relationship that can uh, build into something that uh, comes uh, better and better. I mean, if uh, John Coltrane was playing with a different, ti different musicians all the time, he wouldn't uh, reach the, this level uh, that he done. I think it's... Uh, I'm not saying that this is the only way, there's no uh, one way, but uh, I think it's really nice uh, and that's something we, we should fight for, create con conditions for musicians to play together more often. Uh, because back in the day, like in New York in the 60s, there was uh, these places where musicians played one week, like the Village Vanguard or other uh, spots. And that was really, really important for musicians to develop a la language, language and take it uh, further out.
Well, uh, I think that's a contribution that uh, Clean Feed has done in this area. It's because uh, what I feel about uh, musicians uh, developing a sound, uh, it's not a trend, I wish it was, but it's, uh, I think Gabriel and, this, and ZDB, Sergio Hidalgo, made a really good step, like uh, Sergio believed in this uh, trio and uh, challenged Gabriel to have a more organized music um, and it's been uh, great for them and uh, I think it's really important uh, like the uh, what Brexton with w what Arista label did with the uh, Brexton in the 70s uh, like having a contract for uh, 10 records uh, when he was in the uh, peak form and uh, uh, that's really really important and uh, supportive for uh, bands and musicians so I wish there was uh, more, and Sonoscopy is also doing this, and um, I think it's really, really nice uh, when you have the conditions to play often in a space and get used to the room and uh, develop uh, y the material you want to play. Well, there was uh, some, 10 years ago, there was like uh, 30 or 40 jazz festivals in Portugal and it was mostly I say jazz uh, because it was more jazz oriented uh, festivals and this has been uh, changing and I hope it keeps uh, changing like I think the the best uh, situation is not only to have like uh, uh, improvised sets or in the jazz uh, written music but to have like a music festival I hope uh, someday we can come to this point where we have more like uh, music festivals that have uh, jazz and improvised music uh, along with uh, contemporary music and uh, uh, rock music. That's uh, the... I, I prefer to go to a festival where, where I can watch different music than just one kind of music. I like it uh, more and I think people like likes it more as well. It's, uh, there, there's more diversity and I think uh, that would be great to have uh, these uh, more open uh, festivals. I think it's an exciting time everywhere. I was just in Oslo, I returned two days ago, and it's the same thing. I mean, uh, of course they have much more support uh, for arts, and, uh, but uh, it's the same way. They blend uh, so easily and it's so open and so natural. It's not like uh, 10 years before where, do, where you have to give so much thinking about how to, how will we find the common ground or... Yeah, it's natural these days. And I think th there's not only one way in uh, any area. There's uh, s many, many ways. Like even uh, with music, uh, some buy CDs, some buy LPs, some like live music uh, more, some like uh, digital. So in a way it's much more rich times rather than everybody was is buying CD and just listening to music home. I think it's uh, much uh, richer times these days, if, uh, even if not so good for business. But it's uh, what we get back from it, it's much more, it's much better than, uh, than money.